Someone should tell Peter McKinnon that the Canon 1DX Mark II does crappy 4K and only the D850 is good. Oh wait. This has makings for the ultimate YouTube comment because it pits YouTubers against each other, it uh, hyperbolizes something that I didn't say, and also utilizes sarcasm. So kudos to you, sir. But the real question here is, should you use the same camera gear as your heroes? If you love Peter McKinnon and he shoots with Canon, does that mean that you should do your video with Canon? Uh, if you know somebody who does amazing pictures with a Sony or a Nikon, is that the gear that you should automatically get into? After all, these people are creating great images. They must know what they're talking about, right? Whatever they choose must be the best thing because they're making the best images. First of all, gear doesn't matter that much. These people are great at what they do and they would be great with any other camera. If you put a GH5 in Peter McKinnon's hands, he would take fantastic video. One of my friends is Brian Smith. He's a Sony artisan. He's a Polarizer Prize winner. If you were to put a Nikon in his hands, which he shot for a long time, he would still take great images because of course it's more about the photographer than it is the gear. We all kind of know this and yet sometimes when it comes to looking at what people are shooting with, we suddenly forget that, oh, it's the photographer that really matters. I'll also say along these same lines that pro photographers care more about the content than the cameras themselves. They are not in the DP review forums getting into fights over <laughs> pixel density and stuff. They don't think about this stuff. It doesn't much matter to them. They continue to shoot with whatever they have now until something breaks for the most part. When it breaks, they might think about upgrading. Or if a client complains like, hey, you know, you've given us 20 megapixel files. We really could work with 50 megapixel files. And they'll say, I need to get a new body. <laughs> Other than that, until something breaks, they're fine the way they are. Now, the big factor is the devil you know. I shot Canon for the longest time and all my Canon is just kind of underexposed a little bit to my taste. And some scenes would underexpose more than others. But I would look through that viewfinder and I would pretty much after many years know exactly how much exposure compensation I would dial in. So there would be no extra thought process, no chimping and checking and all that. I would just hold the camera up and then my thumb would immediately hit that exposure compensation dial and I would nail the exposure. If somebody new were to come along and wanted to shoot that same type of photography, I'd probably at this point steer them towards a mirrorless camera that had an electronic viewfinder because that EVF would show them exactly what the exposure was gonna be. And they wouldn't have to worry about developing that muscle memory and figuring out the intricacies of their camera. But when you've been shooting for a long time with a particular piece of gear, you learn all its little problems and they're still problems, but you know exactly how to overcome them so they don't impact you anymore. If you were to suddenly switch to some camera that was definitely better, but also different, you would then have to go back and relearn all the new problems that that camera had. Even if it's fewer problems, even if it's overall a better camera, that's going to set you back as a professional. And like I said, the gear doesn't matter that much. So the time that you lose trying to figure out the new gear, you might never make that back up again. So a lot of pros really shouldn't switch even if there is a camera that's better. Lenses are really expensive. Photographers invest in a big infrastructure, especially if they've been shooting with some type of camera for many years. They will have tens of thousands of dollars in gear. And if they wanna sell that, not only will they probably lose a bunch of money as they sell used stuff and then buy new stuff, but they'll also waste a lot of their time. And to a professional, time is money. So to actually rally the motivation to clean out your closet and get rid of all that stuff and deal with all the eBay fees and absorb all that cost, the benefit of it would be huge. So roll back to point one, gear doesn't matter that much, right? It's actually, it would have to be a huge leap in the performance of the gear for some pro to make it worthwhile to get rid of all their gear and waste all their time going through the buying and selling. And finally, relationships. And once you reach a certain level of prestige where a certain number of people know you, camera manufacturers take advantage of the fact that consumers think that the camera itself takes the picture and deserves some credit for the picture. And they make sure that those prominent photographers are using their type of gear. So if you are a big name, you probably didn't have to buy your camera. Canon will rush out and make sure that you get it. And if you're shooting with an old Canon, they might even make sure that you get the new one and make it for free. Not everybody has these types of relationships, but there are a lot of prominent photographers with these relationships in there and they don't always fully disclose them. So if you see somebody famous shooting with a great camera, 
Maybe they picked it out. Maybe it was the perfect gear for them. Maybe that is what you should be using. Or maybe they just haven't bothered to change because it doesn't matter that much. What do y'all think? Write your comments down below and subscribe for more videos. Give me a like. Thanks.